Hello YouTubers from all over the world Today's video is a kind of explanation of my previous one in which I showed you a puzzle that produced three squares out of one square Maybe you saw my previous video, maybe not, but maybe you were thinking this guy is not really producing squares or he, he's playing some tricks on us and that's why in today's video I'm gonna go through all the mathematics with proofs of course that this is possible and I, I will go to all the logical steps involved in the solution as well as some thoughts and ideas that I have while solving it so here we go my first my first idea of course I I knew that uh, three squares is not intuitive to produce but I say to myself well maybe I can use some really simple method that get me these three squares and what are the simplest methods of division the first one is the method that constructs four equal squares out of one square so I apply half in half horizontally and vertically and I get four squares so very easy the second simple method is the method that produces two squares out of one and this time I use the diagonals so if I cut through the diagonals I now produce four congruent right isosceles triangles and if I now group these triangles two by two like this so it goes here and here I end up with two squares okay but now the problem is that here I don't see three squares so I don't see how it's possible to produce three squares so I thought maybe I have to study these methods more generally so I have in general here my square if now I divide each side into two equal parts I get four squares but if I divide each side into three equal parts I get nine squares and in four I get sixteen and so on so I have the sequence 4, 9, 16, 25 or what are these numbers? these numbers are the so-called perfect squares 4 is 2 squared 9 is 3 squared and so on and in general I get n squared where of course n is a positive integer but if now I'm gonna produce 3 equal shapes out of it I now have to divide these n squared number of squares in 3 so I will need n squared over 3 but I see that in most of the cases this is not possible why because 25 is not divisible by 3 16 is not divisible by 3 so I'm I have to make sure that this n is somehow divisible by 3 so I will work not with n but with 3k now and if I square 3k and divide it by 3 like this I get 3k squared okay and 3k squared is for one shape and if this shape now has to be a square I have to be able to extract a square root out of it and if I extract the square root I get oh, k square root of 3 which is obviously not an integer so what does it all mean it means that if n square is a perfect square n squared over 3 can never be a perfect square I have a proof and I am unhappy because this means that this method will not give me the solution that I want although I can say that there was a very close case and this was this case here 
it was that close well do you see these three orange little squares okay these three squares uh, were what it was missing for this giant square <laughs> to be the solution <laughs> okay uh, what is this square now this square each side is divided in uh, 45 equal parts so I get 45 by 45 equals 2025 squares and if now I take one-third of 2025 it equals 675 and 675 is just one shy of 676 which happens to be 26 squared and indeed if I take this yellow rectangle and I uh, begin to transform it so I take this last row of little squares here and I put it up like this and I continue until, uh, until I get this shape and then I continue filling up the rest of the square like this and finally I get this shape which is I don't know about you but for me it's almost a perfect square minus one little square here and if I now mm, have to evaluate the error epsilon in my case it is nearly 0 0.15 percent which is equal to these three squares that are missing divided by 2025 squares and we see that it is less than one percent and after I thought a little bit of this case I was like well of course the bigger the number the squares I produce the closer I will get to the solution I can imagine this square as a uh, LCD screen its little squares are the pixels and the bigger the number of pixels I have the the more accurately this screen will display this square which is the solution or mathematically speaking if n, stand, if n tends to infinity then epsilon will get closer to zero but the other consequence of this is that if n is a finite number then epsilon will always be present will always be there epsilon so I can never get rid of epsilon which means that whatever I do with this method this will always be an approximation method while solving this problem uh, I have never searched for I have never searched for an approximation method I've always searched for an ideal method that will give me ideally three squares well at least mathematically of course and uh, okay I forgot I forget the approximation and secondly uh, I don't see myself producing 2,000 squares and cutting in a puzzle three to two thousand squares it you can imagine the impracticality of all this but now what about the diagonal method I almost forgot it well this produced two squares and now if I continue this will produce now eight squares and if I continue one step further it will produce 18 squares so I will have the following sequence 2, 8, 18, the next one is 32 and so on and what are these numbers so well 2 is now 2 times 1 squared 8 is now 2 times 2 squared and so on and in general I have 2 times n squared well I've already proved that n squared over 3 can never be a perfect square but what about 2n squared? 2n squared cannot be a perfect square either because if I have to produce 3 squares 
multiplying this number by 2 won't help me in any way so unfortunately again this will not give me a solution so these two methods are not good and in order to have a solution I have to come up with something more clever than these two methods so what do I'm gonna do <laughs> well first of all let's pretend that I've already did it so this is my big square with area SB and side length A it has already been split to three small squares equally sized with each one area SS and side length M and I can now write that the big squares area SB is three times bigger than the small squares area right that's what I want or vice versa the small squares area will be one-third of the big squares area and of course the squares area is its side squared so with all this I can write that m squared is equal to a squared over 3 or if I simplify and express m in terms of a I get a square root of 3 over 3 well so far so good let me clean it up okay but now what does it mean now that m the small square side is equal to a square root of 3 over 3 well obviously I can't get rid of this coefficient square root of 3 over 3 and in fact this is a very important number square root of 3 over 3 and as we will see later this is in fact the key to my solution and moreover in order to solve the problem I have to be able to construct it geometrically somewhere in the big square but as I know square root of 3 is an irrational number so can I construct an irrational number well the short answer is of course I begin with square root of 2 uh, it is constructible geometrically with this square if I now express its diagonal in terms of a its side if I apply the Pythagorean theorem for this triangle I get a square root of 2 so I already constructed square root of 2 just with this square well pretty easy right and what about square root of 3 uh, square root of 3 I need a different type of construction with a circle its center and a chord this red line here that is exactly half a radius away from the circle center so this chord what is special about it is that it produces this right triangle with sides r r over 2 and c and if i apply now the pythagorean theorem in order to express c in terms of r i get that c is equal to r square root of 3 over 2 or because the chord is 2 times c in the chord length I get r square root of 3 hmm <laughs> pretty neat right but what if I don't want to use circles well if I don't want to use circles I may want to use squares <laughs> okay I take my initial square with its diagonal but now I construct its side length perpendicular to the diagonal and I get this triangle with sides a square root of 2a and hypotenuse h and if I now express h in terms of a I get exactly a square root of 3 pretty clever construction that needs nothing more than a right angle and a ruler and one more square root of 5 it is m even easier because we take this rectangle with 
one of its sides two times the other and the hypotenuse of this triangle or its diagonal will be exactly equal to a square root of 5 and if I have to be more general here there there were one theorem that stated that square root of n is geometrically constructible for every n for every uh, integer number and I think this was the intersecting course theorem but I'm not really sure which means that maybe my problem is solvable so remember that I have to construct the square the small square side which is equal to a square root of 3 over 3 somewhere here in the big square okay so what do I do I take my big square ABCD with its side length equals to a and uh, if I now have to construct M somewhere the easiest way is to put it somewhere on its sides so I am able to put a point L that is exactly distance M away from one of its vertices in this case the vertex A which produces this triangle now ALD with sides A, M and H its hypotenuse so this side is equal to A M is expressed in terms of A but what about H I apply the Pythagorean theorem and I get this H is equal to 2 A square root of 3 over 3 but wait a minute M was equal to A square root of 3 over 3 and now H is equal to 2 times A square root of 3 over 3 so for me it's pretty obvious now that um, H is equal to 2 times M but does that ring a bell? did I see this triangle in school before or somewhere else? well of course this is the famous 30, 60 and 90 degree triangle and one of its properties is that its shorter leg is exactly one half of its hypotenuse like in our case so I know the angles now and I am able to write it okay so if I construct now a middle point here somewhere let it be point P it will divide the hypotenuse into two equal parts each will be equal to M so DP equals to PL equals to M but now it will produce this triangle APL and this triangle is obviously isosceles because PL is equal to AL but this angle is equal to 60 degrees so it proves that this triangle is equilateral and as a consequence AP is equal to M which makes this triangle APD isosceles also now if we construct middle points of AD and BC so that M is the middle point of AD and N of BC these points will be exactly distance A over 2 away from the adjacent vertices and this line MN uh, is the middle line for this triangle and point P will will belong to this line and this is easily provable because we can we now make these two congruent triangles okay and if now we construct the height of the equilateral triangle it will produce point E on the segment PL and now this will construct four congruent triangles so all these triangles this one this one this one and this one are congruent and this is easily provable as a consequence I get that all these segments are equal to M DP PA PL and AL 
and also this AM segment will be equal to the AE segment the height of this triangle here which will be equal to A over 2 mm, pretty logical and finally this point E will divide PL into two equal segments each will be equal to M over 2 now what I'm gonna do next well next I ask a question <laughs> in order to be able to cut at least one square with one small square with side length M what do I need more well the short answer is another triangle congruent to ALD why because grouping this triangle with the other it will produce a uh, rectangle from which I can cut at least one small square I have to be able to construct a congruent triangle without disturbing the original ALD triangle so my solution was to construct this line to draw this line BT which is parallel and equal to LD and of course this line will intersect AB at an angle of 60 degrees at the same angle okay of course these two are congruent so CT is equal to AL which is equal to M and if now I continue this line it will produce point P uh, point F on BT and AF of course will be perpendicular to BT and for this triangle ABF I know that this is a right angle and this is 60 degrees so this angle here will be 30 degrees and its adjacent angle on the vertex A will be 60 degrees because 60 plus 30 equals 90 degrees the right angle of course this angle were, were easily provable by the congruence of these four little triangles but this is yet another way to find it okay so but now what I see what do I see now I see that this triangle AED and this triangle the purple one ABF what are they they are congruent why because their hypotenuses are both equal to A and their corresponding angles are all equal and what do I get from the congruency I get that this segment AF and this segment DE are equal okay and now if I have to find this segment EF which I name Q from now on how can I find this segment well I know that DP is equal to M and PE is equal to M over 2 so if I look the blue triangle I get that DE is equal to M plus M over 2 here it is and if I look now the purple triangle I get that AE is equal to A over 2 and plus the new value Q and if now I want to express Q in terms of A first of all I get rid of the M's and now I solve for Q which is equal to A times all this sum which simplifies to this which further simplifies to this value A over 2 square root of 3 minus 1 I will remember for now this value because I will need it later okay what I'm gonna do next well I don't know about you but I had enough uh, with geometry and constructions and so on so it is time to 
rearrange things and group things together and play with things a little bit so I simply I simply take my two initial rectangles and I put it here next to each other so that they form a rectangle of course everything is clear here the side lengths are M and A and the diagonal it's, is 2 times M okay so I get rid of the big drawing and I place this rectangle here of course I don't forget side lengths I get rid of this middle line okay now for me it's obvious that I can cut at least one square for from this rectangle here it is but now for the other two the second one and the third one this square this rectangle is not enough it is obvious that I need another rectangle which will be what is missing to have three squares so I will call this rectangle the residue rectangle and it is obvious that this rectangle has to have one side equal to M and the other side it is not clear for now so I put it as R remaining side but I know that A plus R has to be equal to 3 times M for the 3 squares okay and now this helps me express R in, term, in terms of A so here it is R is equal to A square root of 3 minus A and I can write it like this A times square root of 3 minus 1 but hey did I see something similar earlier in my solution well yes this was the Q value and the only difference between these values is this factor one half here so I can easily see that this Q is one half of R or R vice versa is two times Q and this dependency here is an important one and I'm happy with it because this will pave the way so to speak to, to the solution but how it will work well I take my residue rectangle here and I take what's left of my initial square it is this long shape it is in fact a parallelogram DLBT with its longer side equal to 2m and its height or its width if you prefer equal to q now what do I have to do in order to fit this shape into this rectangle so that it solves my problem well first of all I know that q fits perfectly two times in R but what about the other side well this is 2m this is m so very simple I have to be able to divide this long parallelogram into two shorter so the easiest way to do it is via this middle line PQ here so I produce DPQT the upper one or and PLBQ the lower one and I take the upper one and I place it so that its width occupies half of R and I place the lower one so that it, its width occupies the other half of the R side so I get with this of course I don't forget that its longer side is equal to M and this is Q and this is Q which is pretty obvious okay I get rid of the big drawing now I see that however I move these two small parallelograms 
I will always end up with parts that are sticking out so what I'm gonna do with these parts well the simplest solution is to cut these two parts out and just to put it up here see if it fits oh yes it fits perfectly and this side length here M doesn't change if I do this so this will be the same which is perfect because it now proves that our problem is solvable and our problem is almost solved I say almost because there are some things that I need to do more well what are they so first of all let me put all that I have in this kind of container here so I put my initial two triangles I don't forget their side lengths okay and then I put the parallelograms parts the first one then the second one and I don't forget their side lengths okay now uh, instead of Q and R I will express these in terms of M and A well it seemed co it seems complicated but believe me it's not these are the dependencies and uh, now what is the problem the problem is that I don't see any square yet so these are triangles and trapezoids but no squares well in order to cut the squares I must know where the cut lines are well where they are well here are the squares so the cut lines must be between these three small squares and these cut lines are exactly distance M away from each other and the overall distance here is 3 times M thing that you've already seen uh, but now I see that these two cut lines produce line segments that I don't know yet one of these segments is this segment that I called F that is equal to A minus M and the other one which is even more important is the G segment this little segment here that is equal to 2 times M minus A okay and if I now have to express F here it is pretty simple and G also not so difficult so if I know these two segments I am now able to know where to cut in order to produce my three squares here it is I've hatched each squared differently and with this I can consider my problem as solved because now it is proven that these three squares now can be constructed and cut <laughs> okay but hey I wanna have fun here and I wanna see the cutting of the three squares okay yes they are not cut so here they are I take the areas and the first square now and the second square okay here they are now I even want to have more fun and do the opposite now arrange all these shapes into my initial big square
with this I'm very happy <laughs> I was very happy to do the mathematics and to prove mathematically that this is doable and now finally if I'm gonna produce a puzzle out of it this is my cutout totally we have 10 pieces and the pieces are not so small uh, and there are not so many so I dare say it is pretty clever solution <laughs> okay so if you wanna if you wanna do the cutout you must know the different sizes here and the different side lengths and here they are right so the red ones are what you need to take into consideration before cutting whatever and the blue ones they are not crucial but with the blue ones you can easily check if you you've cut the exact lengths and if everything fits perfectly together okay these are the formulas that you may want to use so I will let you enjoy a little bit this cutout and thank you for watching I hope my video didn't waste your time I hope you enjoyed this video but wait there's more <laughs> okay here are some of my ideas for future videos now one of these ideas was uh, of course another way to solve this problem without using these 30 60 and 90 degrees triangles and of course if you've watched my previous video it, in the end of the video you saw another puzzle that was somehow different uh, which is the solution and this time uh, the M side is not on the square side but it's inside of the square which makes this solution even more interesting than this one and but this will be the subject for another future video uh, another idea is let's continue and make five six and seven squares out of one I did five squares and seven squares if five squares is really not difficult seven squares it was very challenging to me to make you will see this in a future video another more general idea was can I make any prime number of squares out of one square for me this is a very interesting topic and although I don't have a way to prove this for now maybe someone wants to prove it I don't know and finally if I have to extend this idea into 3d how about making three cubes out of one <laughs> uh, for this one I don't have any idea if this is possible and how this is possible but it is another interesting idea for me okay so that's all for today I hope you like and enjoy this video and it didn't waste your time so you can like you can subscribe you are free to do whatever you want to okay so take care have a nice day and until the next one